Oh, good afternoon. This is the five minute warning. <laughs> So this is a five minute warning. I'm Ashley Patel. Thank you to all of you for joining us for our Rotary uh, lunch program. Happy New Year. And uh, we're just going to take five minutes to enjoy your fellowship in person and on Zoom. And we'll start. Thank you. Like, 
My name is Ashish Patel, and uh, Happy New Year. This is our first uh, speaker program for 2024. Um, Sue, would you like to help us with the OA test? Yeah. Yeah. The four way test. Of the things we think, say, or do. The first is the group. Second is fair or concerned. Third Four will be beneficial to all concerned. And fifth will it be fun. Thank you very much, Sue, for spontaneous self-organization. <laughs> So the theme, the theme, the theme for this uh, month is vocational service. Um, my vocation is breathing. <laughs> so let's start with a few easy breaths. Um, let's breathe in peace. Try to be present and. For the next hour, just enjoy the fellowship and learning and joy of being a Rotarian. Oh, now you can breathe out. <laughs> breathe in again. Breathe out. 
And thank you for being calm and caring and part of this amazing community. Uh, next, to uh, happy thoughts. Dave, you've always done a good job and you've got more money because you got some love this. So this is a part where if people just want to have anything that they um, wish to celebrate or announce, uh, please let me know. Just a second. Thank you. There we go. We may want to turn down the volume just a bit. I think that may be a, a part of it. Um, so hello everyone. Um, happy 2024. Uh, we have uh, Mark is going to start us with our happy thoughts for the new year. Thank you, Dave. I just have happy thoughts that on your table. On your table is a summary of our uh, uh, Red Hill campaign that we've done over the, over the past year. And uh, if you look at the bottom, the total twelve thousand dollars is fantastic. Um, collected two thousand three dollars. Actually, I think a little bit more than that per hour. Which, if you've heard in the past, that an empty kettle, an unmanned kettle, means nothing. So with the Rotarian support from this club and a few from the Risers, we brought in a brought we helped bring in a lot of money for the uh, Salvation Army, and uh, they are very appreciative of it. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. But if you if you rang and you see you wanted to know what you did on the kettle during that time that you rang, that was the total during the day. So thanks to mails. A donation, a hundred thousand dollar match, as well as I think did ten thousand dollars prior to that. Um, we did. They brought in a lot of money, and if there was nobody standing there, they probably would not have done. So we had a lot of multiple ringers, and I appreciate those. And I have a question from John. Is it almost on the on the mail day? Is that include the double line? Yeah, that's the cat. That's just from the cat. From the cat. So thank you, everybody, for helping out. Thank you. We actually did better than that because Kay and I went to the wrong kettle. I will I will uh double that because I joined myself at the wrong place. And then when a lady came from some church and she said, what church do you belong to? I said, I'm here with Rotary. I said, is this your shift? She said, yes. So I looked up and sure enough, I was at the wrong place. <laughs> so it could have been a lot better on the 16th. But I also want to use the, uh, the happy bucks who paid Fred Suler because he came every night that we were ringing, and that takes a friend. Thank you. I think we're especially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as you know, I'm on the Salvation Army Community Advisory Board. Bad job we put on that board. Some other people in the room. I guess um, we did very well in the kettle campaign. I think the total amount is well over four hundred thousand dollars. I don't have the number I get right now. It was. Um, it was Probably the best kettle campaign we've ever had. Four hundred fifty-five thousand dollars wow. present. Wow! So, a lot of media. Thanks to all of you for organizing. That obviously went extremely well. We have a date and location set for next year. Already. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be time to figure out where we're going. I I'm putting. <laughs> I'm putting it that this is working. Okay. I don't think you're okay. okay. Anyway, I can I I can talk about it. I'm glad that I'm I'm putting in the money because I'm delighted to know that there are members of our club that are going to be joining me in the charter house in the, during the next few months. So there could be more people, more Rotarians of us together. We'll have a little quiet club. Thank you. So while other people are waiting um, for their thoughts, I'm going to put in um, some happy bucks. I uh, had the opportunity to go to the district midterm 
and it was well attended uh, by the Rochester contingent. Uh, really had a great time. It was well organized and well run. Others. Let's go ahead. Close us up. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dave, President-elect. And um, for my happy buck, I just uh, have three announcements uh, with it. Uh, the first is uh, sharing the leadership development with, uh, with Dave and um, uh, Bill Wichter. It was really a excellent uh, training for and rehearsal for what's ahead this uh, coming year. The second is, um, we do keep it fun in pulmonary. And um, as your chairperson for Rochester Fest 2024, the theme for this year is live your dream. And um, I'd like a group picture, which uh, Sherston will take. Um, and uh, the, the uh, special treat that I got was with white gloves included, a framed Post Bulletin article, and Jeff Peters happens to be on our club from the Post Bulletin, but I was touched by the fact that um, we are, as a community, really living, trying to help each other live our dreams. And with Martin Luther King's day coming up on uh, his dream for civil rights and civility uh, worldwide, um, I honor this uh, as part of our Happy Box tradition. Uh, I did put in a little bit more than normal, which is um, I put in $216. And for the mathematicians in the crowd, uh, Dr. O'Fallon, uh, that's two times 108. And if those people who use chat GPT want to um, put in uh, what's the mystical significance of 108, you'll find a few answers there. So thank you so much. Uh, keep it fun, keep it light, and keep it bright. <laughs> We'll do the picture later. Uh, guess, Steve, do you want to help? Yeah, sure. Steve, do you want to help with guests? Sure, I'll do that. So we have three guests today. Um, we'll start with Michael Hastings. Uh, and uh, Sue, do you want to say anything? Uh, Michael's with Beverly Services and joining us today for training. Thank you. Dave uh, is here as a guest of Colin. Right. Do you want to say anything? Oh, go ahead. I'm here with Colin Alvarez on behalf of Emerald Financial Group, Graphic Financial. Thank you for letting me be a part of this today. Oh, welcome, Dave. I forgot to say Jay Jacobs. Michael Hastings. And then we also have Vincent, who's been a guest with us before. And yeah, maybe during this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I came from Alaska. I heard we're laughing at the snow up here. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, well, we waited to hear you. Okay. He needs an application. Anyone else in the room? As a guest. Thank you, Steve. And uh, can the Rotarians just give a round uh, welcome? Thank you. We kind of covered uh, reflection in the, um, partly. I would just like to emphasize that during our uh, district midterm, there was a real push to connect peace, ethics, and uh, volunteerism. And this uh, model of the Institute of Economics on Peace was shared with our group. As you can see, peace builders, community builders, mm -hmm. and dream weavers um, have things in common. And these uh, eight pillars are what we'll work on through the rest of the year and be emphasizing in different ways uh, how we translate this at the level of our club volunteer activities, as well as the story of uh, Rotary as uh, peacekeeping and peace building. So uh, more to come on this one. 
Uh, Sarah has been involved with uh, ethics and peace at the level of getting our high school students. And obviously with Strive program and Cradle to Career, we are committed to helping not only the youth build this capacity, but having us uh, make sure we're good ancestors, as uh, Mayor Norton said yesterday in her State of the City, uh, to set organizations forward. Uh, next. Um, before we get, oh yeah, let's just do birthdays and anniversaries. So uh, the people having January birthdays, Kathy Lassard, Ellen Hayden, Donna Greeson, and Melody Trimble, none of them are here today, or, right? Ellen's online. Oh, Ellen, online. Ellen, you're online. Uh, we'll sing happy birthday. And Judy, if you want to lead us off. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And then we'll blow up the virtual candle. <laughs> All right, and for anniversaries, you can see quite the range from one year with Karen Peterson to 49 years, John Woodruff. Um, thank you again, uh, congratulations, a round of applause. All right, it's my honor to do an induction, John. You want to cover some new business? Oh, we will just, uh, okay. yep, thank you. Uh, just my honor to uh, induct uh, one Rotarian here who's visited our club, has lots of uh, local expertise, and uh, I wish to um, have Stuart come up. And this is my first, yeah, just stand over here. We'll present your uh, short bio, which you gave me five minutes ago, <laughs> and read a little script that's written in here with my glasses. <laughs> so on behalf of the Rotary Club of Rochester, it is my privilege to induct a new member today. Please allow me to introduce a Stuart Rossi uh, and his sponsor, me. Uh, you are beginning a great adventure in leadership, in friendship, in service to your community and to your fellow man. You have been invited to membership and the Rotary Club of Rochester has accepted you as a person of good character, high ethical standards, a person who has heart of service and will represent the classification of environmental sustainability as a leader in the community. Your sponsor, Ashley Patel, has extended the hand of friendship <laughs> once again and invited you to become a part of this worldwide organization involving over 1.2 million other uh, colleagues with kindred spirit uh, dedicated to and encouraging and fostering the ideal of service as a basic, basis of worthy enterprise. Uh, Stuart, please recognize something black uh, by placing this sponsor, sponsor pin on your lapel. I think that was just an acronym. Thank you. Yes. Maybe that Allie did help. She was past the name page in order. Perfect. So very exciting. You have a lapel to put it on. Now, while Stuart figures out how to do that with Allie's help, I'll keep reading and just tell you a little bit more. Uh, Stuart, uh, was graced, uh, graced us by his presence and his enthusiasm over the last few committee meetings. And I was just um, very impressed with your commitment to um, making sure that we are inclusive, that we create a criterion set on how people can be involved with activities and really uh, promote sustainable development for all in our community. Uh, so it's with that generosity of heart and the commitment to your spirit of service above self that I also wish to acknowledge at this time. Thank you, Ali, for helping with me. Yeah. Perfect. 
Dave, do you want to take a picture with Ali and I? I'm sorry, Ali, I wrote the Actually, why don't you go back there with the Rotary Club and Black? I mean, I don't have a problem. Then you're green. Best friends stay back. <laughs> All right, let's get them up tonight. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the session, we'll have Stuart just meet us uh, about five minutes before we close. Okay. And um, you can greet him and congratulate him. Thank you. All right, just a few announcements and then uh, we'll have our main program with Celeste. So first of all, thank you to uh, Vicki and all that were able to participate at the holiday gathering on December 21st. Uh, there was a really nice uh, choir, uh, Frank Allen, Dave, uh, Ali, and uh, the team. We took this group picture and um, just reminded us the power of social presence, not just virtual presence, but actually in person with the spirit of Christmas and the hope that arises uh, through this uh, wonderful uh, spirit of discovery and collaboration and fellowship. Uh, Mark did a great job summarizing our contributions at the Salvation Army. And thank you also to Tamsin and the rest of all the coordinators that uh, do the hard work behind the scenes. A special thanks to Fred for being such a partner and uh, keeping that chair warm, at least Walmart over there where, where we ran together. Uh, Mary, Dr. Uh, Mariana Gonzalez did a walk with the DOC program. This is a monthly event that's sponsored through uh, exercise abilities and uh, partnerships with the various physicians. Um, she did this on January 6th at Apache Mall and I was informed it went very well. Uh, the Jeremiah program, uh, who's uh, Marilyn here. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, Marilyn's not here. Marilyn, are you online? No. No. Okay. So just a reminder from her that we do have a Cook for Kids event that's being planned in the dates uh, to be announced. Uh, and it will be again at the Jeremiah program at that house over there uh, near Lourdes. Ethics and Build Peace Building Day, Sarah. What? February 12th. February 12th. So the dynamic dozen will meet the 50 of the mm -hmm. high school students at, at John Marshall. And that promises to be a great reaffirmation of why we as Rotarians are, need to be more active and voice uh, for ethics as well as peace building in our community. Um, I sort of did, uh, Christine was gonna make the announcement the Rochester Fest got announced in late December. Uh, a reminder that if you go to the website, rochesterfest.com, there is still a free uh, button design contest and the button will have the words uh, for the theme this year, which are uh, live your dream. And if you want to raise $300 and win that prize out of the person who's won it consistently for the last three years, um, that would be also a good underdog event and uh, much appreciated. It doesn't take a lot to submit the application. And so we're, we're monitoring behind the scenes and you're all welcome to participate. However, your creative juices flow. <coughs> so, um, so last who's gonna introduce you, Sarah. Oh yeah, John, do you wanna bring that up? Thank yes, you. I, uh, talking to, to people in different communities at the Rochester Athletic Club, Talking to people at the athletic club about joining Rotary, and I kind of mentioned to him, and he mentioned to him again. Uh, at one time, International had brochures to hand out, uh, so I called district office, and they don't have them anymore. So what they referred me to is a, a generic template, and I started working on uh, a template or with our club in it, but I need a lot more help from people um, to get it set up right and 
So it's something in, in, in the works. And also people ask me, been asking about logo items. Uh, I call the company we used to deal with and you know, t-shirts or, or polo shirts. Someone mentioned hats today. If anybody's got any feedback on what what logo items and you know it's a commitment, we probably come up with a list for people to sign up and for the sizes. I don't know if we want to have a stock of them to have, maybe, maybe not. Thank you. Thanks, John. So if I operationalize what you just said, uh, one, uh, John is looking for feedback from this trifold that uh, we're creating so that for new uh, members or members that are interested in our rotary activities, uh, they may be able to find it uh, locally specific uh, ideas as well as opportunities. So this is just an informational tool, uh, tool that will add to the information brochure and other packages that we give when we meet with uh, prospective Rotarians. So is the question, will this uh, trifold be specific to our clubs or to Rochester will be uh, free calls? Yeah, we'll, we'll start with just making sure that it includes the things we want on our club, and then I'll bring it to three club leadership, which uh, is meeting tomorrow, but then also in the future. I, I'm looking for just making sure we're meeting our club's needs, but as we're getting uh, smoother and more um, organized with all our internal operations, that we should be able to partner and uh, make it a resource that's available to all three rotary clubs. We don't want to create tension or uh, competition between the three clubs, but we do want to make sure the community knows that Rotary is visible and cares and uh, active in many areas beyond just fundraising or attending the speaker program meetings, even though they're as awesome as this one's going to be. Judy, quick. Yeah, I, I, I want you to be more aware of the, of the uh, mic. I, I'll bet you they can't. See, the people that are watching on Zoom, who can't hear anything that's going on in here. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in this room. And and I, I there were a bunch of people on there now. There's I see only one. No, um, if they can't hear, they, they're, they're missing a lot of stuff that's being go, going on. Everybody was sort of letting the mic sit down there around their belly button. <laughs> it doesn't do any good. <laughs> and and if we want to be a club, and you do, we, I want to be able to go on because sometimes I can't get here. I want to be able to go on Zoom, and I don't want it to always be such a loss. You might get, we'll hear the speaker, but that'll be about it. So, very good input. If you have a question or comment, and just hang on to the mic. Raise your hand and I'll come to you um, with the mic each time so the people on my hand. I can sort of project. But, but indeed, I, I understand your comment. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, I was so attuned to everybody in here. I didn't realize people were dropping off on the Zoom. They're, they're there. Oh, they're, they're there. there. I just met them. All right. Um, Sarah, would you like to come up and thank you uh, for not disappearing the people on Zoom? <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce today's program uh, by one of our own Rotarians, Celeste Hofer. Um, Celeste gave me a little tip if you haven't met her uh, directly. The uh, Hofer is like gopher. Oh, <laughs> it's perfect. Um, and she's going to talk about the partnership between Rotary and Toastmasters, an organ two organizations that Celeste is very involved in. She's been a Rotarian with us since uh, 2022, but she's been involved in Toastmasters much longer. Uh, she's been a member of Toastmasters International since 2011 and is currently serving as the, as the Division F Director for District 6 of Toastmasters International. Within Rotary, again, only since 2022, she's already involved in the STRIVE program, the Young Professionals Mentorship Program, and I'm happy to say she's going to be one of our discussion group leaders during the Ethics and Peace Building Day. 
Um, outside of her volunteer activities, Celeste has worn hats that include being a registered nurse, a software test engineer, her family, she's a wife, mother, grandmother, dog mother, um, <laughs> and an active volunteer with many organizations, especially St. Vincent de Paul that she found very rewarding. She does a lot of hobbies as well, sings in her church praise band, likes puzzles, crocheting, flower gardening. She must be one busy woman. So please help me welcome Celeste. <laughs> I need to try something without my phone first. Here, my phone. It's live. It's They're both live. It's not loud. I think you have to speak in the end. Okay. Let's see. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> that didn't work so well. <laughs> Maybe it knows a snow storm is coming. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's under yep. right here. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? All right. Thanks, Good. Thank you. Thank you for the adjustment. Thank you, Sarah, for the introduction. I'm going to angle a little. I guess I can see the screen right there. That's awesome. Now I know why you have the screen back there. I thought it was always for the people in the back of the room that couldn't see everything so they could turn around and, and read things on the screen, but it actually helps the speaker. So now I'm catching, I'm catching on. Next screen, next slide. Today, it is my honor to speak to you about the Rotary Toastmasters Alliance. I am very happy to be here with all of you, President Ashok, fellow Rotarians, our honored guests. Let's see if I got your names right. Michael, Vincent, and Jake. Did I get you all? I hope. And our new member, Stuart. And I think my slide is, there we go. Next slide, please. Four years ago, almost four years ago, I guess we're a little bit past January 7th, 2020, there was an announcement that Toastmasters and Rotary are going to partner officially to have their members work together professionally so that they can make a difference in their communities. Now, there's always been somewhat of a grassroots effort between Rotary and Toastmasters in various communities where different organizations, people would get together and, and work towards a common good depending on the needs of different organizations. And I should also tell you, I'm gonna just pause briefly. I wanted to make this point that at the very beginning of when I was working on this presentation, I had an aha moment. And I'm gonna tell you about it later in my presentation. So this happened on January 7th, 2020. This mentioned on the PR Newswire. There was something else that happened that very same day. Next slide, please. And I don't know if you can see the, the top of the screen. However, the Scottish poet, Robert Burns, in 1785 said, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. And why do I say that? Because on that exact same day, there was another announcement. Next screen. From the Chinese public health officials talking about the pneumonia outbreak in Wuhan, China, when they identified it as the novel coronavirus. And the specific type is listed on the screen. And as you know, the whole world changed. It was difficult to establish a collaboration with all the changes going in place. However, there were some organizations in different communities that still established this formal collaboration. I will show you later through the slides um, where you can find that information if you want to read those different stories. However, I think today the time is right. <clears throat> We're past that urgent crisis and we still have Rotary, we still have Toastmasters, there's still a need 
And I think that we can still find room to collaborate. So today I would like to go over a brief history of each organization. I'd like to educate you about the Rotary Toastmaster Alliance as it is proposed. And I'd like to give you some information on how to get involved. And I hope that you are interested to do so. As you can see, we're gonna talk a little bit about history. Let's go to the next slide. It all goes back to 1905. That was a really big year. In 1905, Rotary started in Chicago, Illinois, in the office of Gustavus Laird, and I'm sure I'm not gonna pronounce the names of all of these men. Other men joining in were Hiram Shorey, Sylvester Shile, and Paul Harris, who was the founder of Rotary. <laughs> Toastmasters also had some initial rumblings that same year, but in Bloomington, Illinois, so also in Illinois, which is really kind of interesting to me. Ralph Smedley worked at the YMCA, and he would start up a little group. He never really had a formal meeting, and he moved around a lot. I think that he must have been a very charismatic individual because where he would go, he would get a group going, but when he would leave, it would fizzle out. Some 19 years later, there was an official meeting of Toastmasters in California, Santa Ana, and Toastmasters began. This year, the group will have its 100 year anniversary also back in California at Anaheim and Disneyland. It will be the International Convention. Now let's talk a little bit about diversity. And I'm gonna talk about women's entrance, entrance into diversity. I couldn't find any information about admitting people of color to the organization. So I'm guessing perhaps it was never an issue because I couldn't find any information on Rotary and I couldn't find any information about Toastmasters. And certainly as the organization spread throughout the world, there was going to be more diversity because both are very international and I will get that in just a little bit. Efforts to bring women as members into Rotary started as early as that I could find on the timeline is 1950. And there were many, many tries to get women admitted as members. Now women could assist and do different things, but they couldn't right. join. So finally, in 1987, at the Rotary Club of Duarte, California, they decided to just go ahead and let's admit some women. Well, that didn't go over very well, and there were some court cases. And the courts kept ruling in the favor of the club, and it went all the way to the United States Supreme Court, where Justice Powell affirmed the decisions of the lower courts and said women can be admitted. The story, next slide, for Toastmasters is a little bit different. When Homer Blanchard joined in 1970, but can you guess? Homer wasn't on the board. Homer's real name was Helen. And she signed up as a man because she wanted to join. I think this was San Diego, it was Southern California also. And I don't know if the people in the club knew or if they figured it out, but by 1973, Toastmasters said, yes, we will accept women members. That same Helen became the first president of Toastmasters in 1985, and there's been several women presidents <coughs> since then. So both organizations were striving for the same thing. They went about it a little differently. <laughs> I thought that was kind of fun. <clears throat> the demographics of each organization. Rotary is bigger. Rotary is in 220 countries compared to 140 for Toastmasters. 46,000 plus compared to 14,000 plus, 1.4 million members compared to 270,000. I should just mentioning a little bit, I guess it's maybe goes under diversity, but a lot of people in the United States will join a Toastmasters club because they get ESL support. They have a lot of place to practice their English as a second language skills in a very accepting environment. Both clubs, or both organizations are on six continents. And for a short time, Toastmasters in the, was it the 1900s or the 2000s? No, earlier than that, 1990s, excuse me, was operating at McMurdo Station in Ant, Ant Ar I hate saying that word, Antarctica. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, it, it's kind of a good fit to maybe have a public speaking organization in Ant. I'm not going to say it anymore. <laughs> As opposed to a service organization, because 
I don't know who there is to serve there, but maybe your penguins. I don't know. <laughs> Next slide, please. Let's talk a little bit about our slogans and models because it tells a lot about what our organizations are. The gold name template it was from the 1928 toast, or excuse me, Rotary Convention in Minneapolis. So four years after the organization started, there was a there was a convention held in Minneapolis, and when you think about it, that's not too far from Chicago. There were two models for Rotary, and there still are. The first one is Service Above Self, which was adopted in 1989 as the official motto of Rotary. The other one that you can see there, he profits most who serves best, was changed or rephrased the last time in 2010 to one profits most who serves best. And that is still considered to be a motto, but it's not the primary. Rotary is a public charity organized for charitable purposes, which ties right into service, doesn't it? Toastmasters, however, is an educational nonprofit. Other educational nonprofits that you might think of are Peace Corps. In 2011, Toastmasters changed its model from some type of, I'm not sure what it was, but related more to communication. It changed it to the model of where leaders are made. And the argument was made that so many people involved with Toastmasters are either working on their leadership skills or are leaders already. There are some of us, including me, who would like to see the model go back more towards communication because as we look around our world, boy, do we need to work on our communication skills in everyday life. Next slide, please. And I'm just gonna check, I always have to check my time. Okay, 1243, thank you. That's one of the things I'm always working on is my time management. Everything I'm going to speak about in this next section will probably reinforce that aha moment that I'm going to tell you, tell you about in a little bit. Next slide. Yep, next slide, please. thank you. You may not know who this is, and if you do, please don't shout it out yet. It is said that this, well, I guess it's as I read about this individual, he may have been the first Rochesterite to promote the Rotary Toastmasters Alliance. Now we have someone right here sitting at our first table, Dave Martell, who is our incoming Rotary president and is a former Toastmaster and actually started a Toastmaster club, one of the early morning clubs in Rochester. So I think he's got a real good awareness of both organizations. The man in this picture, Rochester Man Magazine stated that this man was DMC 50 years before DMC because he did so much for our community. And yes, this is Mayor, former Mayor Alex Smekta. Next slide, please. Mayor Alex Smekta was mayor for 17 years in Rochester. And if you read about him, he did in the Rochester Magazine article, it's amazing all the things he did for our community. He never lost an election. He had a little pause there, he took some time away, but he always won his elections. Plus, he was the former international director of Toastmasters International, which is the highest level you can read, reach as a leader in Toastmasters. I have to believe that as mayor for 17 years, he came to visit this club more than once. And he may have even been a Rotarian, I'm not sure. And with his community engagement and everything going on, I think that he truly is an example of someone serving the Alliance way back when. Rochester Magazine also states that he's the most important Rochesterite that no one talks about. But now you can think about him and talk about him a little bit. I'd like to next tell you a little bit about the Toastmasters education program because I feel that people in this room more than likely know quite a bit more about Rotary than they do Toastmasters. And you have some handouts on your table with in blue ink, colored ink that you can look at if you would like to share and look at. 
So the education program has five core competencies. We teach the first four, public speaking, international communication, or excuse me, interpersonal communication, strategic leadership, management, those four. The fifth is said that you can't actually have a program that teaches it, you will learn it by doing all of these other things, and that makes sense. These all lay the groundwork, next slide please, for the Toastmasters Education Program, dynamic leadership, all of these. And if you look at the numbers by them, it tells which of the core competencies are focused on. You can see that public speaking and confidence are focused on or thought to be achieved through all of these. Next slide, please. Are there courses on the Rotary website through the Alliance that you can look at? Yes, try a communication or leadership course. I'll show you later where to find these. There are eight. And there's a lot of other information out there too. Free to you as Rotary members. Next slide. Oh, you got it. Okay. So what are the opportunities for a Toastmaster member? Maybe not as pertinent to this group, but it's good for you to know. You can volunteer with Rotary. You can learn more about your community and ways that you can help. It will enhance the member experience and you're gonna make new friends. Next slide. Can a Toastmaster participate in Rotary activities? Yes. A Toastmaster can assist at Rotary events, which might be a real benefit sometimes when you're looking for extra people to assist. But a Toastmaster cannot help fundraise unless you're a member of both organizations. Let's see, okay, can a Rotary Rotarian participate in a Toastmaster meeting? Yes, anyone can come as a guest and participate in table topics, which is impromptu speaking, but only members can give a prepared speech and receive an evaluation for improvement, and that evaluation is key. That's how you learn about yourself. And how to explore this alliance, the final portion of this presentation. Can I have a time check again? 1248. 12 okay, thank you very much. How do you engage? I have a list of all of the clubs and their numbers on your table. And some of the surrounding communities that are part of Division F. For all I know, you have family members in these other communities. You can put their club number in, Toastmasters, and you can Google, Google them to get the website. You can go to find the club, just do Toastmasters, find the club, enter in your search bar, and you can visit a club online anywhere in the world where Toastmasters has a club that is of interest to you. You can invite a Toastmaster to visit your meeting, help with the service project, possibly host a joint meeting with a special purpose. I think that would be really interesting. What to, ex let's see, what to expect? Did we go that far? Did we skip one? No, okay, go ahead, next, thank you. And of course you want more information. You can go to the Rotary website, you can go to the Learning Center, and you can find these courses that were mentioned earlier in this section of the website. You can also access information on the Totary's website, toastmasters.org slash Rotary, and there you'll find, among other things, the success stories of the Alliance that have happened so far. Next. And what to expect, I think I mentioned before, you can, you're gonna visit or observe prepared speeches, table topics, evaluations, and you can only deliver prepared speech, you can receive an evaluation list, your member, unless, next slide, unless you participate in Speechcraft, which is a Toastmasters program for non-Toastmasters, extremely flexible. It will range anywhere from four to six to eight weeks and a Speechcraft is being planned for our interested members of our Young Professionals Program this winter. It likely will start in February. That is the goal, it's being arranged right now. And a number of Toastmasters in town will be helping with this. Each participant gets a guide or a mentor to help them along their way. You, when you do your Rotary online training, I noticed that it was mentioned that if you're doing some speaking, it would really help you again if you have an evaluation. And I don't think anything says that a Toastmaster can't help you or have somebody experienced who knows what to look for, give you an evaluation. And actually, Allie is providing me with an evaluation today, a written evaluation of my speech, because she is now also a Toastmaster. She will not be giving a verbal evaluation. <laughs> Thank you, Allie, for doing, doing this. In conclusion, well, wait a minute. 
this is really just the beginning, I hope. We're not concluding anything here. We're starting on. Next slide, please. Do not say who this is if you know. This is a very wise man who in the early 1930s when the nation was going through the Great Depression helped a struggling business that was about ready to go bankrupt and developed a program to help its employees. And he saved the company, is so it said. He created a 24-word test and all the employees, employees used it in their dealings with the customers. Next slide, Herbert J. Taylor who created the four-way test. In 1943, it was adopted by Rotary. He was a Rotarian in the Rotary Club of Chicago, which I think is that original club of Rotary. And this Toastmasters is where I had my aha moment, my aha moment, <clears throat> because at the beginning of every meeting, do you all stand up and say, service above self? Do you? No. What do you do? You say the four-way test. And the four-way test says of the things we think, we say, and we do. And it goes through all these things that are really related to communication. Because I think as Rotarians, you realize to serve others, and to help your communities, you have to do so. <clears throat> I should get closer, I'm sorry. <laughs> you need to do so in a way that affirms your fellow man and you communicate well. I think that this Toastmasters Rotary Alliance really affirms the four-way test. I think we're all thinking. Toastmasters focuses on the say, Rotary focuses on the do, and there's definitely overlap. So I hope that you have learned something about these various organizations, the Alliance, and are motivated to at least investigate Thank you very much. And are there questions? So just a quick comment. One of the areas we're focusing on this year is mentorship. And with young business professionals, we're trying to mentor them as new leaders in the community. Uh, this is one of the best programs that they could possibly attend helps with their public speaking, but it goes beyond getting a speech. If you were in a meeting and you're part of the discussion, just the two minute discussion that you have during the meeting can be greatly impacted by the skills they learn in Toastmasters. Uh, so if you haven't been involved with Toastmasters in the past, I would encourage you just to attend a meeting and see what it's like, and then look at some of the young professionals in your businesses who may be giving a speech um, and talking um, and not really thinking what they're saying. Um, and, and those ums are annoying. Everybody who hears them, but the individual that's saying them doesn't realize it. And Rotary coaches them on how to get rid of the ums, the ahs, the ands, a variety of things, and it improves their presentation as individuals in their business and in the community. Questions? I'm curious, where did the name Toastmasters come from? It started with Ralph Smedley when he, he was trying to coach young people at the YMCA, and I suppose it was men, I think it was mostly men then, how to get a speech for a toast at the beginning of the yeah, associated with yeah. toast. But yeah, so it was not... A, some people have had the erroneous conclusion that it's a drinking organization. And it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's it's giving them, you know, can you can you do that wedding speech? Can you do a eulogy? Can you these things in your personal life you might be called on to do, even if you're not asked to do professionally? Great presentation, Celeste. Um, for your fifth or sixth competency, the confidence, that is a experienced through the active uh, participation. How do you incorporate courage and compassion as part of the saying, doing, and feeling of your messages? We felt it before we knew it 
or we've already spoken sometimes, but how, how do we actually practice and build courage and compassion along with the conflict? I think that you practice the courage and the, the confidence to your fellow people who are learning to speak or your fellow members by, by the, the affirmation and the peace building that we talk about in, in Rotary because you want to build people up. And that's one thing we, I didn't mention when we, when we give an evaluation, it's called an audio. <clears throat> we are positive. The middle is something to work on, like the, the filling, and then positive. We build people up and tell them what they do well. And then we give them a couple things to focus on for improvement. And it needs to be, it needs to be something that is, can be accomplished. You can't, you might see like, well, they should do blah, blah, blah. Don't overwhelm somebody or they won't be able to accomplish the thing. And, and you just kind of keep doing that. I know in the clubs, we've had people say, come here. And if you're really nervous or scared, come here because we will help you. And if you fall down your face, we don't care. We've all been there. <laughs> we've all had things happen. Other questions? One more? Thank you, Celeste. It was a, a really comprehensive uh, Toastmaster uh, Rotary uh, overview. And I'm wondering if you want, uh, could just give us a, a short, uh, it's 12.57, and I know being on time is important, but a, a short analysis of the difference between being a Toastmaster, going through the Toastmaster program versus what the Toastmaster Rotary Alliance those eight different uh, uh, learning modules would be like. I have to say I have not gone through the learning modules, but that is on my list of things to do. They look like they're maybe fairly general from what I see. In Toastmasters, they're going to take you through methodically. They're going to tell you how to add in at the beginning stage of, of any path adding in vocal variety, the words you use, changing your volume, your pitch. Maybe I wanna talk really louder all of a sudden to get your attention, things like that. How to use your gestures. Verbal static is a huge thing because I might sit up here and say, um, uh, oh, and you'll notice even your, your reporters on election night, when things aren't going well and they don't have a script, all of a sudden, that verbal static, if they're not really accomplished, might start coming in. And then you can learn maybe sometimes presentation mastery skills. There's all uh, working. There's a lot of different things you can learn. Maybe leading a, a forum. It, you can take it so many different directions. But pathways, each path has five levels, and you build on it. Does that help? Yes. Thank you. You also have to learn with impromptu how to uh, speak without notes. <laughs> so, so on behalf of our club and um, uh, Alzheimer's Association, I forgot. <laughs> we'd, we'd like to uh, I donate the, the money to that cause um, for your presentation today. So we're, we're adjourned um, in just a second. I wanted to take a minute to thank our uh, greeter, uh, John Woodruff, and our um, introduction to guest, Steve Sperling, at the hallway test of C Movie. Um, Josh up with the greeter. What's that? Joseph was the reader. Oh, Joseph, Joseph reader, John at the desk, uh, Steve with the guests, Sue with the four-way test, Dave with help, uh, and Allie with the pinning and the introduction to our speaker today, Sarah Gilland. So uh, today, this year's theme is create hope in the world and make peace visible. 
We are adjourned. What were you thinking?